about getting the multi tracks and using the instrumentals of score, which I had really not seen done up to that period, um, on the movie uh, Jerry Maguire, which is one of my all time favorite you. films. Great. You great. brought in a song, uh, instrumental by Bruce Springsteen, called Secret Garden, which is not exactly. It wasn't an instrumental. Well, no, no, I'm saying you brought yeah. in the song Secret Garden, but it's not exactly a straight bread and butter what people think of a Bruce Springsteen song. It's no, a beautiful it, romantic ballad that plays the movie genius. It plays genius in the movie. So talk about getting Springsteen and how that song was made to fit in that film. All films, I, I address all films, let alone Cameron's and my stuff, as their own, they all have their own compass points. And with, with McGuire, we originally, we had even thought that we were going to go and I was going to delve into the, the Columbia and because we were making the movie for Sony and we had a great relationship with the, with the music side of Sony, with Matola and, and, and uh, 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 our friends there. And basically we, we, we were thinking of scoring the movie to jazz. To Miles Davis, and I was going to go and get you know unreleased stuff or unmixed things of Miles and early Miles, but as if he was you know the com film's composer. But that was a that was our own personal fandom and pipe dream. We never actually worked on it, uh, but we we the, gives you an idea the 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 template of for where we begin discussions on music on a film. Cameron always would say we, 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 he would use as an excuse to make a film so he and I could get into the room and put music to it. And, and um, no truer words could have been spoken. And, and yet with McGuire, I remember we had made the deal with, with Sony and Glenn Brunman, who was, our, who was our publicist and product manager on Say Anything, we really cared about and I trusted uh, I trusted uh, without question, and so he had he had begun this new division at Sony, Epic Soundtracks, and exclusively releasing soundtracks, and we were going to be the first one. And so with McGuire, he'd ask, call me, and go. So what are you doing? What are you, what's your music? What's your music? I go, Glenn, we're with you because, I, you know, you, you trust us. We're, we'll show it to you, you know, no wine before it's time. We'll show it to you when we've got a, a, at least a template and, and put together. And he was baffled because I, we basically started putting our favorite songs up against picture. Um, I think we, we would put in a funky Neil Young track. We'd put in, you know, all... all, all you know, um, yeah, not not B sides, not not uh, uh, obscure outtakes, but kind of those tracks, those album sides, uh, off the beaten track. And so basically, we had we're searching again for you know that not that in your eyes moment, but but a romantic feel, and us really never embracing composers, although we had the luxury of Nancy. Wilson, you know, to always make us look good and fill in between our songs. But mm, Springsteen had put out that Greatest Hits album, his first Greatest Hits, as I recall. And he had, was one of the first uh, at that time to put on a brand new track along with the, you know, make it captivating for as a marketing tool. And obviously um, they had great you know, they had a great feeling about this song, this original song, Secret Garden. Enough guts, you know, and confidence in it to put it on the greatest hits. It came and went. I don't even know if, 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 uh, if it, I don't even know so if it had ever gone on, out as a single. Right, it was, it on, it was went. on a greatest and, hits compilation. And Cameron and I heard it, loved it. Just this, this, this feel to it. And, I remember I called John Landau and said, you know, John, have you ever, did you and Bruce like ever score it? Did you ever put strings on it? He goes, Danny, we ended up, David Kahn, who was an A&R guy at Columbia at the time, 
written and arranged this whole string section that they had put on it. And but Bruce said no, you know, we listened to it, and we, uh, liked it, appreciated it, but didn't go with it on the finished master. But I had asked him, you know, if if I could get the multi tracks of it now with this new thing, DAT. You didn't have to get the actual recording, you know, stock, but you with a DAT, I could basically go into and have track by track. And so with that, you know, we've got we had the greatest music editor in the business, Carl Keller, and you know, it's one thing for us to think of an idea, but Carl would always make he executed, it graceful. He executed it. Right. And and so we took this secret garden. John sent me and Bruce sent me their multi tracks and allowed me free reign. We put it in as an instrumental. Then we had it build and Tom and Renee's first kiss, you know, at nighttime out on the moonlit street. I remember. And then had it pay off huge in celebration, you know, and the triumph of the film and their relationship. We used it three times. And and um, I also, with Dylan, we were looking for the ultimate, like, uh, poetic piece to finish our tale at the end. And um, we just gravitated. We always loved Blood on the Tracks, Dylan's album, and gravitated towards Shelter from the Storm. And I'm always one of those guys, either my naivety, my fearlessness, uh, uh, or lack of decorum. I. I just I called Dylan and asked him, you know, had he ever had written another verse? Or was there ever an outtake? Was there another version of Shelter from the Storm that I could hear? Um, in the imaginative use that we were going for. And Bob said, yeah, you know, I cut it in Minnesota, did it in a couple takes, and w the first take, tells him this on the phone, the first take, he had a verse that didn't make the master because he was teaching the bass player who was fumbling all through that first verse, mm -hmm. the piece. So I, of course, went, Bob. He goes, well, it only exists as with that bad, that poor bass part. But I thought this is the first time I could use digital technology to our advantage mm -hmm. as opposed to it using us. And we just methodically, when we heard this verse, methodically you know, reduced the bass all but to being non-existent. And that, you know, was the triumph that's, that's of the great. finish of, of, of that made the movie and the soundtrack, of course. With Secret Garden, John and Bruce had told them that, you know, how, how thrilled we were with it. But, of course, screened it for them. We flew our, we were working here in L.A. We flew our editor with the print of the film. You still had to do that then, the, print, the horse and buggy period. And flew the, the film to New York. And I tell you this story because I was dying to get Landau's reaction. I wanted to, I wanted to get a taste of his pride and or his, 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 uh, just his, his overall take and hopefully enthusiasm to how we used it. And um, uh, the editor, I got the editor first and he had, I had ordered him to follow Academy Award winning editor and I'm having him all but get John Landau coffee and I had him follow Landau to the phone and immediately after screening the movie and he overheard Landau calling Bruce and he called Bruce and said something to the effect well I always knew it was a hit so I felt well I guess that's good <laughs> vindicated. news it was, it was effective right. and vindication but at the same time for him but at the same time um, it was glorious and wonderful and yeah, it, it's a great it was moment. really really wonderful and um, uh, but yeah, it was our first kind of Cameron's first and our together, our first huge. We always had these little movies, 18, 19 budgeted films, uh, the, whose soundtracks would do great. Like, for instance, singles sold close to two million records before we released the movie. Wow. It was, that, it was because Epic felt so strongly about this collection of records that if Warners wouldn't release the film, to complement the record, they were going to go out as a standalone, all but as a sampler um, for the new music scene that was happening then, and went out with it and, and sold the shit out of it. Uh, really, really amazing. But with McGuire, you know, the skies parted and the, the planets aligned, and we had a 
We had the world superstar movie actor and, and Cameron's stunning story and um, really a wonderful movie and combined with great music and we find that first breakthrough Killed massive it. commercial. So For more Q-Score, please check us out at EmpowerMe.TV to find out what goes on behind the curtain and how the film and TV music gets made. It happens right here. Tune in.